Hey everybody, it's Chuck Defix coming at you with another Minecraft tutorial and today we're going to be going over something that I came up with on my own called the rail gate. So without further ado, let's get to the tutorial. So now the idea of a rail gate is something that's based off of some fairly old concepts and that's the ability of sticky pistons to retract and push rails uh, back and forth. And the reason of the rail for the rail gate or the purpose for it is to allow for mine carts that are let's say in trains or let's say about four or five carts in a train uh, allow them to be held in a particular spot without having them to be put at an angle like for instance without having to do having them to hold be held in this position for too long right let's say you just want to have a flat track well this is a very good uh, way to do that and they get held in place so uh, th let's just show exactly how this works. So first of all, I'm just going to send. Uh, I'm just going to send off a couple of uh, carts down the track this way. Set that down. As you can see, nothing really happens, right? We saw some redstone signal that uh, that went off. Now we're going to add the carts over on this side, and we're going to quickly turn this on and then there oh there you see the block over there right you saw there was a rail that got retracted and a block got pushed in its way but then there's another one here that didn't get uh, affected there now if we go ahead and put this one here and this one here and this time we're going to launch both of them at the same uh, at the similar times okay with a slight delay let's go ahead and push this in there we go. See that? So the purpose in this case of the rail gate is to basically uh, prevent crashes and regulate traffic on a interconnected railway. So in this case what happens is you give priority to one of the rails. So in this case I've given priority to this rail. This is going to be my main rail I'm going to be talking about. So this is the one where everybody ends up joining on. Let's just consider this like your main highway. And this is one of the side roads that's getting on to that main highway. So what happens is I've given priority to this one. So whenever there is a car or uh, sorry, whenever there is a train of minecarts coming down this side, it will basically put like a stop uh, a stoplight by putting that uh, rail gate into a closed state. And also what happens is if there is a cart that comes around here at the same time, it'll pass by here and then the bond behind it will also close. And then when it comes time for the cart release, what's going to happen is the cart that's going on this side is going to, or train is going to go on this side, it's going to pass by this point here. And then it's going to open up this gate. And once the cart goes through this one, uh, passes through this point, it'll then open up that gate and allow for more carts to come through. So let's take a look at how this thing works. So first of all, we're going to take a look at this part here. So we have a um, we have a cart that comes on this side here. And what's going to happen in here is that now this let me put this this detector rail. Uh, you don't really have to be concerned about that. That's just something that I use to launch uh, this little cart here, so uh, that little ramp and power that to launch the carts. So this detector rail is something you don't need to have uh, in your system. This is just a little extra that's there just for demonstration purposes. Now, first of all, is this RS latch. So if you don't know what an RS latch is, I would suggest going back to my tutorial on RS latches. But uh, this is something that is going to be the first key in the puzzle. And so what's going to happen here is when the train goes across here, it's going to hit this detector rail and then it's going to power this redstone dust, which then sends power into this inverter and shuts it off. That makes sure that this inverter does not receive any power and so you end up with, sorry, this it does not receive any power and so it starts emitting power from this redstone torch and keeps this into a non-active state. And so you have now a output coming out of here and 
it then goes into this cascading stack circuit. I don't know if you can notice that, but you got a cascade, you have a cascading stack circuit right around, right around here. So it's going in here like that and splits off over here. And here you have where your two output lines are. Okay. Now for the rail gate itself. So let's take a look. Let's go over here to this one here so we can see better exactly how this is working. And what happens is you have uh, one piston which is in an extended state and one piston which is in a retracted state okay and so what happens is you have when you have an input that comes in and then causes this cascading stack circuit to activate that will cause first of all this piston to retract and then this piston will extend. So if I go ahead and put my little rail thing here, see that? See that? So that's the basic idea of that case. And you ought to make sure to make sure that one is extended and the other one isn't, you had to make sure that you have, like in this case, one signal that's inverted and the other one, which in this case would not be inverted eventually when it gets to the top here. I know it looks like you have a signal inverter here, but we could essentially feed this signal directly into this piston and it would still work, right? As opposed to having uh, this little vertical item transport, uh, sorry, vertical redstone signal tra uh, transmission system there. So that's how that would work. So we go back to our model here. So once you've got this turned on, you've got the cascading stack circuit which will activate and cause this piston over here to retract the one, the sticky piston over here, and cause this one to extend out and push the block out. That will cause your little, uh, basically your stop signals, your stop signal type of scenario. So that's, uh, that's that'll cause it to bounce back if there's a card that comes in. Now, also, this signal is going to fit into an AND gate, okay? And uh, now before I get into that, uh, another thing is that on the other side here, let's say you have your cart that's coming, again, your cart's coming down this way, it hits this and activates a latch, but then what happens is it goes across this side, and when it hits this one, it then deactivates the latch, and that's how you end up having this turned off the moment it gets across over there. But while it's turned on, you'll have this uh, gate will basically close. And then you have the signal coming from the same redstone torch over here that causes this cascading stack circuit to activate. It will also go over to the input on this AND gate. And then what happens is it will sit there in a fixed state until you get another cart that comes along here and hits this detector over here. When it does that, what happens is that'll activate this uh, input here. So when both of these inputs are turned on, that you'll end up with a signal that comes out over into this RS latch, or RS nor latch over here. And then that causes this output to turn on. Okay? And then this will then go and activate the cascading stack circuit over here. You can see that over there. And it'll cause this one to close. Okay. And, but the thing is then, if once this causes the, causes the reset, this is going to turn off, which is then going to cause this to turn off as well. And then you also have, that's going to cause this, uh, sorry, this gate here to open you have a signal that comes then once the cart comes across this detector rail over here that's going to cause a signal to come out from here and then reset this RS nor latch that had kept that gate in a closed state. Now I'm just going to break this up here and I'll tell you one thing is that the number of repeaters that you need here is completely dependent on how you set this up. So. The reason I have a repeater under here is because of this redstone block. Uh, if this redstone block was not there, 
then I would not have a repeater here, right? You could just have it going straight all the way to this point over here, okay? Uh, you want to make sure that there's a significant amount of distance between uh, this point over here and this point over here, as well as between here and here. The reason is you want to have enough time for this thing to travel along and enough time for this thing to stay closed so that if a cart does come in, it won't end up crashing when this thing comes across. So, as you can see, if you want to have an idea of how long this is, between from here to there, we've got well, the detector rail, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight rails before you get to the intersection that's there. Then after the intersection, you have one, two, three, four, five, six rails over here. But if you extend it out to eight, that actually would be better because then you got enough distance between the first train that passed and the second train. Okay. For your repeater timings, you're going to have the repeater over here on four ticks, which feeds into this repeater on one tick. You also have this repeater that comes out from this point on two ticks. This repeater is going to be on one tick, and then this one also is going to be on one tick. The purpose of this one here is basically just to make sure that this redstone dust doesn't con does not uh, connect to this redstone uh, wire over here. That's the only reason for that. Okay. Now, if I were to go to then then this side, this redstone repeater is just there to make sure that the current goes right into this block and feeds power into this piston. Okay. As with this one, is the same type of scenario. The only pre reason for this is to first make sure that this doesn't get connected to this over here, and also to make sure that power gets fed into this block, which will then Power, uh, send power into this repeater and this uh, redstone torch to turn it off and then allow this uh, piston here to retract okay um, timings on this one doesn't really matter uh, I would suggest just putting it on one tick each uh, the reason for these again is to uh, supply power into the individual blocks so here and here uh, in a direct fashion without having it interfere with this redstone torch this redstone repeater is, um, is there so uh, you don't end up with power that will be coming from this block affecting the redstone dust on this side and it will only take power from this redstone torch and feed it into the rest of that's uh, the feed it into this point here where you have this entry into this RS nor latch on this side for this side again you have this repeater but one tick just to pull out power from this particular uh, rail uh, detector rail and then this one here is again just to feed power in uh, this one here again just to pull power out but uh, then this one here is where the timing becomes important you have this one here on four ticks because this is a cascading stack circuit this is why it's important this one here is on four ticks this is on one tick and this is on one tick Okay, and on over here, this is also on one tick. The purpose on this one, again, to feed into this uh, piston uh, some power directly, and then of this one, of course, to feed power into this inverter directly. Okay, again, as I mentioned before, this detector rail is not necessary, it's completely for demonstration purposes only, and as with this line, is not necessary either, as is for demonstration purposes only. This is just my launching mechanism just to make things a lot easier. And uh, hopefully now you guys get an idea as to how this works. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions on how this is built or any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. You can also like and subscribe, please do. And when you do leave a comment, just make sure you leave it clean as, uh, you know, this is for everyone. It's a community there. There could be kids listen, uh, watching and reading this thing. Uh, so... And this is Check the Effects. Until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.